Welcome to the Creative Thinking Podcast with Kim Thomas, a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. In each episode, we seek to inspire, inform, and encourage creative thinking from a biblical perspective. Using the scriptures as our guide, this season, we are walking with Jesus through some of His last encounters, His resurrection appearances, and finally, His ascension into heaven. Visit our website to learn more about the Village Chapel or to find today's show notes. Now, here's Kim. One of you is going to betray me, Jesus said. I tell you the truth. This sat in the air that night, light enough to linger way too long, but heavy enough to feel like temple stones on every disciple's chest. Peter, ever the one who doesn't know what to say, but says it anyway, interrupted the solemn moment and asked John, who was seated next to Jesus, to ask him who the betrayer was. In response, Jesus identified his traitor by dipping a morsel of bread and offering it to Judas. In his gesture, Jesus lovingly appeals to Judas one last time, looking in his eyes as only he could. But Judas does not hold the gaze, and instead moves forward, directed by his already darkened heart. Leslie Newbigin said of that moment, the final act of love becomes with a terrible immediacy the decisive moment of judgment. The final gesture of affection precipitates the final surrender of Judas to the power of darkness. Judas made his choice, and Jesus told him to go and do what he had to do. John's record of this in chapter 13 is vivid and intense. In verse 18, the disciple records Jesus as having said, The one who shares my bread, meaning the traitor, has lifted his heel against me. In the first century, Showing the bottom of the foot to another person meant an expression of disdain or contempt, similar to the sudden kick of a horse. This word picture reflects what was in Judas' heart, but Judas did not take Jesus by surprise. This act of betrayal was jarring to Jesus and deeply affected him. John says that Jesus was troubled in spirit, in verse 21. This is the same verse used for when the waters were disturbed at the pool of Bethesda, or when a crowd was violent or agitated. So while Jesus was committed to his mission and fully aware of his impending victory, he does not face the task and enemy with detachment. He was appropriately moved by the refusal of grace and willful disbelief, even at his personal appeal to Judas. Not only was this a day when Jesus identified his betrayer, but a few verses further down in the same chapter, in verse 38, he identified Peter as one who would deny him. A betrayal and a denial by men he had been loving, ministering with, and living beside for so long. These two, Judas and Peter, had seen everything up close, had walked with Jesus in the most privileged way, and yet we see the Savior navigate these two relational disappointments with his eyes on the joy set before him. He is ever closer to his impending physical suffering and ultimate crucial burden of carrying our sins, causing separation between he and the Heavenly Father. Surely he is acquainted with any griefs 
we could experience, and surely his mercy is generously enough. Jesus told Peter, the overconfident disciple, that Peter would deny him three times before the rooster crowed, and Peter was beside himself with pride and assured Jesus that that would not be so. But Peter would be found at the third cock crow, broken, a three-time Christ denier. And to his utter horror in that moment, Peter turned to see Jesus looking at him, and he immediately fell to his knees in deep remorse. There is a distinct difference between Judas the traitor and Peter the denier. While both had been part of the journey with Jesus and seen and heard the truth of his initiating love themselves, in the moment when it mattered, they both failed Jesus, and their weaknesses are still discussed today. However, one repented, consumed with regret and sorrow, and sought the mercy of Christ. The other had some sort of regret, and there are arguments on both sides about how authentic his remorse was. Either way, one is immortalized in the fog of mere remorse, while the other stands strong in the clarity of re repentant remorse. Peter is infamous, and in many ways he is the, quote, patron saint for all of us, that thanks be to God, no matter what our sins, his mercy is more. We will revisit Peter after the resurrection, when Jesus will restore him and recommission him in a precious meeting by the Sea of Galilee. The 20th century North American poet Lucy Shaw so elegantly said it in her poem, Judas, Peter, from her book, The Sighting. Because we are all betrayers, taking silver and eating body and blood and asking guilty, is it I, and hearing him say yes, it would be simple for us all to rush out and hang ourselves. But if we find grace to cry and wait after the voice of mourning has crowed in our ears, clearly enough to break our hearts, he will be there to ask us each again, do you love me? Well done, Lucy Shaw. Let's close our time in prayer. Jesus, thank you for your glorious redemption work completed at the cross and in your resurrection. When we fail, you are generous to send the Holy Spirit to woo us to repentance and invite us to grace, enveloping us in the mercy for deniers and losers, failures, sinners, weak ones and lost ones, and that invitation is new every morning. Oh, Father, what a glorious thing you have done for us, this work of salvation. Thank you for not giving up on us and for choosing us as your own. In your loving name we pray. Amen. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Be sure to subscribe, leave a review, and share this episode with friends and family. If you live in the Middle Tennessee area, we invite you to join us in our historic chapel for Easter weekend services. To find specific details and other resources, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com.